welcome to the show. India is a country that celebrates its women as much as it terrorizes them. So if you are an independent woman wanting to claim your space, wanting to live independently and travel alone, you better know some self-defense techniques. And on that note, our guest for today is Ashwin Mohan. Ashwin is the program director at Savage Fighting Arts. He and his team have empowered over 9 lakh women across India in claiming their space. Ashwin, um, on the average Indian street, it's not just uh, just sexual intentions from which threats arise for Indian women. There's much more. Um, and you've been running you know, a program um, across India empowering women on how to defend themselves. Tell me about this program. We have a very um, simple and easy program. You can learn it in four hours. It covers all kind of uh, situations that can happen uh, starting from eve teasing to groping to mugging to to chain snatching. Uh, the problem is not just um, uh, sexually motivated. It's not just sexually motivated crimes. It's it's about uh, a deep resentment that women are claiming space which formerly belonged to men. I think this is the psychology. So uh, now it's really important for women to learn how to deal with this because they didn't anticipate this. They didn't anticipate that you know I'd get out there, I'd start working, I'd earn my self-respect, and then I'd get attacked. You know. So it's, it's, it's something that every woman should learn. So are you going to sort of take us through at least a tiny slice of this program so we all know at least a little bit about how to defend ourselves? Absolutely. Me and my partner uh, Siddharth are going to show you um, what our program is made out. It's easy to remember. It's called FACTOR, F-A-C-T-O-R. And each of these letters stands for something. The F stands for frisking because anyone could be carrying a knife. Somebody comes and attacks you, pushes you around and or stuff like this. Remember that they could have a knife. Don't forget that. So what do you do? If the hands are, are, are too strong and far away from you, you just turn sideways like this and check their pockets for a knife and check here. And use your leg to check the inner part of his shins. Nobody stores a knife on the outer parts. It's only in the inner parts. If you do find something, hold them by the jeans and lift. And take the knife out calmly and throw it away. Sid is a large guy, you can see. But it's just leverage. You see, these are lever points. This is a lever point and so is this a lever point. So it's very easy when I hold this and I hold this and I pull this, Sid is going to fall down. I've personally found 62 knives on the streets of Bangalore by frisking over uh, 335 people. Uh, I used to do this. I used to go and pick fights just to learn. I've got slashed only once and uh, because of frisking I've never got slashed again. Now the A is acting, you see. You never let the person know that you know something. When they come to attack you, what do they expect you to do? They expect you to do this. So do just that. He comes to attack you, just do this and then start having an epileptic fit, you know. In the meanwhile, move your hands up like this. As you're having a fit, hold his ears and continue having a fit, yeah, and then slam his head on the floor. Let's say suddenly someone takes you by surprise, grabs you by both arms, yeah, and start having an epileptic fit. It's very hard to hold someone who's shaking like this, right? Then again, see, leave a point, pull, right? Once you have him down, kick him in the groin, stand on his femoral artery here. It's really painful, you can see Sid in pain, poor guy. You can break his ankle, you can slam his leg onto the floor, you can do a lot of things. You can also do this, let's say it's less severe, this happens a lot to women. You're just standing in a bus like this, every time the bus breaks, yeah, so you, once that happens to you, you just sneeze, and then you slam the back of your hand, either the knuckles or the wrist onto his nose or on, onto his temple, onto the side of his face or on his neck. It's all painful. It doesn't have to be a very hard strike. So the moment you do this, you just sneeze out and then you say, I'm sorry, did I hurt you? Are you all right? Don't follow me, I'm allergic to people touching me. You know? So then he stays away. Right? So this can be even for these kind of sneaky things. You know, this is feeling you up, stage one. Most women will do this. Don't do that. Don't do that. When, when this happens, ah, let him have it. Then you can apologize. You say, I'm so sorry. Are you all right? This is again, by the way, a part of acting. So, 
Are you all right? Did I hurt you? No. It's okay. Thank you. Okay. Ah, ah, ah. Oh, sorry. Did I break your finger? Are you all right? Okay. Now, what happens here is um, I'm not hurting his ego because if you're a girl and you hit a guy and then he breaks his finger, he's obviously going to have a hurt ego and that's more dangerous than the molestation. Yeah, he'll come back with some agenda, acid, knife, etc. You don't want that. So you just finish it there. Everybody who saw it feels that it's an accident or oh, it's an accident. We've got the F and the A covered. Now we're going to go to the C, which is control. You need to sometimes control a person. Uh, the reason being that maybe you can't hurt him. Maybe he's your brother's friend or your brother-in-law maybe. Yeah, you can't really hit him. But you need to control him. You need to show him that I know stuff and I will really mess with you if you don't cease and desist what you're doing right now. Let's say somebody has got drunk in a party and he's got his hands all over you, right? Yeah, just take two fingers and control him like this. See? Very simple. Now, fingers can bend this way easily, nothing happens. But when they bend the opposite way, it really hurts. Now, this is the vector. Wherever the bottom of the wrist is pointing, that's where he's going to go. See? If I want him to stand up, I point the bottom of his wrist upwards and he stands up. So I've got him under control here. I'm just holding three fingers, as many as I can hold. It has to be at least two to be effective. Hold two. If you hold one, you'll break it and you'll end up hurting him. Now you may ask, what if he punches me with the other hand? Try to punch me, Sid. Just increase the pressure. Punch me, Sid. Come on, Sid. <laughs> okay, he can't punch you. He can't punch you with the other hand. What if he kicks you with the other leg? Oh, I thought you were going to kick me. No? Oh, okay, all right. Moving on to the next letter, which is T. And uh, it stands for take down. The reason to take someone down is uh, so that he doesn't follow you. If you take him down, you should break his ankle, especially if it's a street situation, right? So you have this person clawing at you and doing stuff to you, right? Immediately grab his nose and take him down because the body follows the head. What I have to do is make my hand in an L shape, which is what he is, loser, for attacking you, and you place it on his nose, right? And then you get this here or here, anywhere. This acts as a fulcrum. His body is the load. And this is the force. You push this, he falls down, you don't end it there. You take his ankle and you, can you turn around Sid? So we can show it to them, yeah. This way the ankle is not going to break, see, I can stand on it. He just gets a little pain, nothing happens. But if I turn the ankle this way and I step on it, if I press hard here, it's going to snap. Keep it this way and then slam it. So now the ankle, which is basically, get up Sid, is basically a sliding joint will do some sliding and it comes up off like that and then it's not going to sit back then you can walk away you don't have to run away and now for the next letter the next letter is O it stands for observe for weapons objects as weapons also everyone has a laptop and the laptop has a cable this is a very good weapon this is a whip you can see it will cut through uh, skin and cause welts and cause pain, and nobody will come near you. Do you feel like coming near me? That's all, you have it in your bag, there you go. Your checkbook or just a sheet of paper, this is a weapon too, because when he comes to attack you, hurts, right? Yeah. Try something, hurts, kick him. This distracts people, right? This is a whistle. Now, why do you need to carry a whistle? It's a kind of camouflage. It makes you look like a, uh, a cop. He comes to attack you, you've got this. You blow and, and the person is confused. He's like, what exactly is this? Is this a setup? Is there a problem? And you keep blowing animatedly saying and do all that pointing. He's gonna get confused. Not only this is an irritating sound, he cannot keep uh, focused on what he wanted to do because he didn't expect it. So he's like, uh, I don't think I'm going to carry on with this mugging. He turns around and goes, I have uh, prevented a lot of muggings with this. This is something that you should carry with you. It's just 10 bucks, you get it in any sports shop. Look at these, all little knives, all claws waiting for you. Which is the best place to claw? This place. This is where you should claw. Somebody holds you, just claw there, he leaves you. 
someone holds you around the waist, you claw here and he leaves you. Okay, let's say you have a small square object like this, you can throw it at his face. Right? Even if your aim is bad, he's going to spend enough time dodging the object so that you can take down, break his ankle and go away. After that, you should avoid that place for some time. If you're a man, grow a beard. If you're a woman, change your hairstyle and stay away from that place because violence has repercussions. Now, the R stands for running away, uh, which many people think they'll do when they're attacked, but they don't have the cardio fitness to do it. Right? This is very, very, very important. If you're going to be Bruce Lee on the street, you better also learn how to run away. You have to keep yourself fit. You have to be able to run for an hour without a stop. This ensures your self-defense. It ensures you a good body. One is running away. The second is learning to scale obstacles and roll with them. So what I would recommend you do is go to the park and scale objects like this. Get over them without touching them and not hurting yourself. You come here, you slam one leg down real hard and jump up. See, jump up. As you jump up, you, the obstacle you're holding with your hands, exert downward force with your hands. So you come even more higher, see? So it's all done together. And you come over the obstacle. It does not take strength, it's just technique. Okay, so you have to learn at least a simple vault when you're running away from people, because otherwise it would slow you down. You're running away, you're running away, you reach this, and then you start climbing like this. You're obviously gonna get caught on the fence, right? So sometimes you can just go over something and duck under and hide and then look. And if he comes around that way, then you take down, break his ankle and run the other way. So it's very important to learn how to vault over objects. That's one important skill. And the second important skill is learning to land from a height. What if you're running and you reach a dead end where the only way is down? So you have to learn to fall from a height and still not hurt yourself. This way I don't hurt myself. I'm also in a runner's block pose so I can, I can take off. What if it's more than four feet? What if it's 12 feet? Then the impact will be solely on your hands and legs. So you have to learn to roll forward on one shoulder, either your left or your right. You need to practice it so that you uh, distribute the momentum and you take the impact off your joints. I'm landing from a really big height, 12 feet. If I land like this and I stay here, the impact is going to go up like that, hit my spine. It might hurt my shoulders. It might hurt my knees. So I don't want that. What am I going to do? The moment I land like this, I'm going to turn over this way and roll. I've distributed the momentum. And if the momentum is too much, I take two rolls. Running by itself as a skill, vaulting as a skill, landing as a skill, and rolling as a skill. If you have these four, then you're good for the street. All right, ladies, so you know what to factor in to empower yourself. And you know what I really like about factor? 